Star Wars had such staying power in the late 1970s. I mean, we have to remember that it didn't just influence kids, uh, you know, kids' toys and kids' imagination. It influenced everything. This is Lee Habib, and this is Our American Stories, and we tell stories about everything here on the show, including your stories. Send them to OurAmericanStories.com. They're some of our favorites. And on this show, America is the star. The American people are the star. Speaking of which, The Nostalgia Awakens is an exhibit featuring every action figure toy made by Kenner from 1978 to 1985 based on the original three Star Wars movies. The Star Wars toys on display are from Jared Roll, enthusiast and museum curator from Wisconsin. He and his brother Kevin owned many of the toys when they were children. As an adult, Jared collected the rest of the original toys. Here's Jared Roll to share the story of how Star Wars toys revolutionized movie merchandising, licensing, and even how kids play. Well, I guess we will go back to you know, to the beginning, and that was in 1977. At that time, I was four years old, and my mother is a, is a fan of sci-fi. She watched syndicated Star Trek episodes, and she had learned of this movie called Star Wars that was coming out, and by the time we saw it, it already had gained a lot of uh, interest, a lot of hype. Star Wars was released in May of 1977 to only 32 theaters in the United States, just to put that in perspective, so 32 theaters. It's uh, when The Force Awakens was released. It was it debuted in over 4,000 theaters. So, again, there are people who have documented the story of Star Wars. You know, the little movie that could, and how it just changed everything. When that movie came out, there was nothing like it. It changed everything. It changed how we think about the relationship of toys and movies. Uh, merchandising, licensing, how kids play. I mean, it really solidified action figure toys. I mean, up to that point, toys were not licensed for movies like they are now. They just, movies weren't around long enough to justify the cost for toy companies to invest in a toy line. So with the exception of some evergreen uh, licenses like Disney, uh, Looney Tunes, you know, because they were around for, for decades and they had other ways of appearing. Unless it was a TV show, action figure and toy lines, they weren't made for movies. And so that's why when the Kenner Toy Company signed on to be the, the sole producer of toys for the Star Wars movies, they were taking a risk. If you would go to Walmart today or, or Target or any place where toys are sold, you will see toys you know, in the aisle for blockbuster movies before the movie even comes out. That's a given. You want to just get the most out of it, help even create excitement for that property. But when Star Wars came out in 1977, kids like me who left the theater, we wanted toys for that movie, but there were no toys to be had. When George Lucas was in the process of creating Star Wars, he knew he had a story that would appeal to kids. So George Lucas shopped around the Star Wars license to the big toy companies first, saying, you know, I've got a movie coming out. I can't tell you a lot about it. I can't show you much about it because I'm keeping it a secret. But, you know, it's going to be science fiction and it's going to involve, you know, characters that I think will translate well into a toy line. And the bigger toy companies like Mattel and Mego you know, they said it will pass. You know, there's too much risk involved. Quite frankly, you know, science fiction just really doesn't appeal to kids right now. And so it's not worth our risk to do that. That's where now the, the Kenner toy company enters the scene. Now, Kenner at this point, they were a small 
toy manufacturer in Cincinnati, Ohio. They were a subsidiary of General Mills Foods. So if you've ever eaten Count Chocula cereal, then that's the company we're talking about. And they were just the, the small toy arm of, of General Mills. And so they were willing to take a look at it. And it was just one of those stories where, where you just had the right people working for Kenner at the time that saw the potential of this movie. And being a smaller company, they have there's slightly less risk and they can be a little more nimble than versus a, a giant toy company. And so Kenner Toys said, we will do this. We can do this. And they shared some product samples with uh, Lucasfilm and Lucasfilm uh, said, yeah, you, you, you know, we're, we're on the same page when it comes to this. And so they signed an agreement with Lucasfilm and they were the ones to make these toys. You know, people will, will tell the story about Bernie Loomis, you know, being asked the question, you know, he was, he was the president of Kenner at the time. What size should we make these action figures? And Bernie Loomis, well, you know, stretched out his his finger and his thumb and said, they sh Luke should be this tall. Um, and that size was three and three quarter inch. The decision that Kenner made was based on the idea that they knew to make this toy line really, really catch on with kids. They needed to have a world for kids to play in. They needed to have environments, you know, what we call play sets. They need to have vehicles for the figures to go in. And to do that, you can't do that inexpensively with a 12 inch toy line. Up to that point, up to, up to 1977, 12 inch was a very common action figure or doll size for, for boys, dolls, or action figures. G.I. Joe really started that, certainly solidified it in the 60s and early 70s, but they knew to have a Millennium Falcon that you can't make a Millennium Falcon for a 12-inch Han Solo. There was, it would be so expensive, and, there, and, you know, and retailers wouldn't want it for their shelves because it would dominate an entire shelf for itself. And so they, the three and three-quarter inch line, you know, that, that made sense, and Bernie Loomis made that choice to, to keep the figures to that smaller size for that reason. But it would take a full year before action figure toys were even available for that property. So when Christmas of 77 rolls around, kids like me, we want, we want Star Wars toys for Christmas. That, yeah, Christmas is the